Go ahead. Uh, hello to you, sir. My name is Mohit, and I am an uh, employee in an IT company. My question to you is: uh, If there is a judgment day set, and after the death, everybody has to be uh, uh, taken care of by God, and every of their uh, good deeds and bad deeds are to be settled uh, at at uh, at the judgment day. So why, since the birth? a person is mad or has some uh, diseases and it continues for i mean uh, till his life is and and after that it is i mean i mean throughout his life he is he or she is suffering from the disease and after that i mean the brother who, asked I mean, a very good question you have asked a very good question if there is good and bad based on that on the day of judgment god will punish you or may reward you so what justification it is that some people are born handicapped some people have congenital defects some people have heart problem so is god unjust now based on this information the hindu scholars they came up with a new philosophy if you realize if you read the vedas vedas speak about punar janam punar means next janam means birth next birth even quran speaks about next birth next life Quran says that God has given you life. You come in this world, He'll cause you to die. He'll resurrect you again. So Veda says the same thing. But the Hindu scholars they could not understand that how could God be unjust? That He makes some people born handicapped, some people wealthy, some people poor. So they came with the philosophy of birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, which is not mentioned in the Vedas. You know, he is born handicapped because in his last birth he sinned. He is born poor because in last birth he sinned. It is their thinking, not of the scriptures. In Islam, we come in this world once, and once is sufficient. Then we are resurrected, and then the day of judgment. Now, coming to your basic question, what reply does Islam has? Why some people are born healthy, some people with disease? With congenital defects, some people rich, some people poor. If we analyze, Quran says in several places, including Surah An-Nam, chapter number eight, and Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse one fifty-five, Allah says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made your children and your wealth as a test for you. Now, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala tests different people in different ways. Now, depending upon the test. If the examination paper is difficult, the correction is lenient. If the examination paper is easy, the correction is strict to justify. So Almighty God tests different people in different way. Normally, in an examination every year, the test paper keeps on changing. You don't have the same questions. If you have the same question, then where is the test? So now, depending upon the examination you undergo, for example. One of the pillars of Islam is that you have to give zakat. Anyone who is rich, who has a saving of more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5 percent of that excess wealth in charity. Now, one person is rich; for him, he has to give zakat. A person who is poor, he has to give no zakat. So, in the zakat category, he gets 100 out of 100. For the rich man. For the rich man, you know, he may say, "Okay, fine. I may have one million dirham. You know, I'll give zakat only on hundred thousand dirham. Maybe he'll get ten marks out of hundred. May get fifty marks. May get zero mark. For the poor man, we say, 'A bichara hai, poor man. Actually, he's getting hundred out of hundred in zakat. For him, there's no test of wealth. For rich man, there's a test of wealth. You may think, 'Oh, rich man, very good. God has blessed him.'" It's more difficult for a rich man to go to Jannah than a poor man. That's what a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. We may think it's a blessing; it may be a test. Similarly, on the other hand, the person is poor. For him to do hijab, you know, they stay in one room. For him to do hijab or her to do hijab is difficult. For a rich man who has got a big mansion, many houses, you know, for the lady to do hijab is easy. So their hijab is easier for a rich person, difficult for a poor person. So based on the condition, sometimes it's difficult.
and sometimes it's easy you know there are parents who may be pious now they have a child who has a congenital heart disease maybe god is testing the parents more now the parents may say oh i have been praying five times a day why do i have a son who has a heart disease god is testing them if really the parents are good what they will say alhamdulillah at least god gave me a son so what if he has a congenital disease now more difficult the test higher is the reward to pass ba is very easy you know graduation in arts very easy to pass mbbs is difficult but the moment you pass mbbs you get doctor degree doctor dr so more difficult the test maybe almighty god wants to put the parents in jannat e firdaus almighty god is testing the parents with a son who has a heart disease yet if the parents are faith in allah it's a test for the parents no where does the quran say that if a person is poor you go to hell it's more easier for a poor man to go to jannah than a rich man no where does the quran says that if a person has a congenital heart disease go to hell we feel oh bichara hai for him actually the test is easy we with our human logic start thinking poor man so poor actually the poor man to go to jannah is easier so almighty god test different people in different way depending upon the test the examination the correction is in into strict that's the reason the quran says in surah nisa chapter 4 verse 40 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never unjust in the least degree and allah says in the quran in surah al imran chapter 3 verse 185 that kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut every soul shall have a taste of death but the final recompense is on the day of judgment so based on the test the final judgment is on the day of judgment some reward you'll get in this world you'll get in the hereafter whenever there's any calamity any calamity it can either be a punishment or a test if you're on the straight path that calamity is a test for you if you're on the wrong path it's a punishment for you similarly when you get something good in your life it can either be a reward or a test if you on the straight path that good thing is a reward for you or it may be a test for you wealth is not always a reward it is more of a test for you god is testing you that with this wealth do you spend it in the way of allah or not so based on this almighty god tests different people in different ways some people are born rich some in a poor family some people are born with healthy some people are born with congenital defect he test everyone in different ways and the final judgment is on the day of judgment based on that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the human beings in hell or heaven hope that answers the question sir you said that uh, allah is going to test everybody and like that but why allah is doing that i mean why god or allah is doing that uh, why why he created us and for his joy or for i mean watching us from uh, up, i mean up there and uh, very I mean, good question why we all, all have been created brother as a question why has he created us human being is he testing us is he enjoying is he like a puppet using us like a very good question that's answered in the quran all the other people all the other mountains trees they are muslim they have submitted their will to god human being is the best creation of almighty god the best creation why because he has given us a free will he has given human being a free will either to obey or disobey god all the other creations the animals the birds the trees the mountains they are muslims muslims means they have submitted their will to god now almighty god created a new creation which has a free will the angels have got no free will they always obey god now after a free will has been given to you if you have a choice to obey or disobey god after a free will has been given to you and then if you obey god you become higher than the angels after a free will has been given to you and then you disobey god you become lower you may become like a satan so it's mentioned in the quran in surah hashar chapter 59 verse 20 to 24 that almighty god asks who wants to undergo the test if you don't want to undergo the test just pass so trees mountain all of them said we fear to undergo the test the quran says 
the human beings were fools who said, okay, we want to undergo the test. So now when you undergo the test, you can either become superior to the angel or you can become like a Satan. So now, if you don't undergo the test, just pass. So we human beings, all these human beings are the people who said, okay, fine. We don't want to just pass. We want to get good marks and we are undergoing the test. Fine. This is a new creation of Almighty God. Not that you want to enjoy. He is giving you a chance to get distinction. We were fools who said, okay, fine. So not to enjoy, to give you a chance to get distinction, not just pass. So now it is on you and me, whether we follow the commandment of Almighty God or not. If you do, you will get distinction. If you don't, you won't get. Hope that answers the question.